Question 11, we've got an e to the x graph. Have a think what this looks like, that you know the e to the x graph is the whoosh like this, and we're translating it five down. It's going to whoosh like this with an asymptote down here at minus five. And that tells you what the range is going to be. The range is going to be greater than minus five. Or equal to? No, it never quite reaches that. So let's do the inverse function. If I add the five and get rid of the e by learning. And so my inverse function is the ln of x plus 5, where the domain x is greater than minus 5. Clearly, I couldn't put minus 5 in here because that would give the ln a 0, and the ln of 0 is undefined. Um, part C, sketch on the same axis the curves. So there's the first curve, and that point there going at minus 5. So... So I'm going to reflect the asymptote first of all. That asymptote's there. And so this is reflecting like this, I think. Um, I've got a couple of places I know. Um, I mean, e to the 0 is 1. Take away 5 is minus 4. So if that's minus 4, then it's crossing here at minus 4 as well. That point there, so when does e to the x minus 5 equal 0? Well, that's at ln 5, isn't it? So that value there is ln 5, which means that value there is ln 5 as well. Getting a bit of a mess in the corner there, but that's what we've got. What more have we got to do? Well, part D just looks totally different, doesn't it? So we've got g of x is the ln of x minus 4. It seems to have nothing to do with the rest of the question. Um, so to rearrange that one, I need to do e to both sides and add 4 to it. And so the inverse of g is e to the x add 4. Um, Domain of that one is x is greater than 4, but that gives any, still can have any number there, so that would be all real numbers coming out of that. And the last one says, when does that equal 11? So I'm going to take away the 4 to give 7, and x is ln 7. Tap that into the calculator, and you get 1.95.